Hey everyone. In this video, we will use conversion, obversion, and contraposition to determine whether arguments are valid or invalid. So this is section three here. So uh, these are immediate inferences. So one premise, two a conclusion. All commodity traders are gamblers who risk sudden disaster. Therefore, all gamblers who risk sudden disaster are commodity traders. So the easiest way for me to go about these problems is to symbolize them. So this statement, all commodity traders are gamblers who risk sudden disaster, can be written as all CRG. All commodity traders are gamblers who risk disaster. And then the conclusion is all gamblers who risk sudden disaster are commodity traders. And so if we symbolize again, we know that our conclusion is all GRC. So we've converted the two, uh, the subject class and the predicate class. So when we flip the subject and predicate class, it's called conversion. Um, <clears throat> and let's just assume that our premises are true. We don't need to get into that right now. But if the premise is true, if you convert the premise, do we know that the conclusion is of necessity true? We do not. So this is illicit conversion, which means it's not, you're not allowed. Uh, and um, remember that <clears throat> in conversion, the types of statements that you can convert that will of necessity have the same truth value are E and I statements. All CRG is an A form statement. And so um, conversion of A form statements uh, does not mirror the same truth value. And so that is an illicit form of conversion. Number two, no child abusers are people who belong in daycare centers. Therefore, all child abusers are people who do not belong in daycare centers. All right, first step, symbolize. <clears throat> So no child abusers are people who belong in daycare centers. <clears throat> so let's look at this one. Mo, no child abusers are people who belong in daycare centers, no CRP. Conclusion, therefore all child abusers, so this is C, so all C, are people who do not belong in daycare centers. All child abusers are people who do not belong. So notice in the first sentence it says people who belong. So, and this is people who do not belong. So the way that we could symbolize that inference or that transition is all child abusers are non-people or people who do not belong in daycare centers. So we go from no CRP to therefore all C are non P. So first of all, we have to determine what we've done here. <clears throat> well, we haven't flipped the subject and predicate classes, and we know that we flipped those classes in conversion and contraposition. So the only other option here is obversion. Remember when you obvert a statement, the statement that you obvert to has, is logically equivalent to the original statement. So we know that every time that we um, obvert a statement, the, the, both statements are logically equivalent. So if this is true uh, and we've correctly obverted, then we know that our conclusion is true and this would be a valid inference to make. And it is a correct, it is a correct aversion. <clears throat> so when you obvert a statement, you change the quality. So here we have a negative quality to an affirmative quality. You change the quality and then you change the predicate class to its class complement, which in this case, we change from P to non-P. Remember that classes and class complements are always P and non-P, C and non-C. <clears throat> it's not not C, it's non-C. It's everything that, uh, in this case, if this were people, it's all non-people. Um, and so because this is an aversion, we know that this is a valid inference to make, thus this argument would be valid. <clears throat> and again, we're not focusing on the truth value of the statements. 
some states having limited powers are not slave states. Some states having limited powers are not slave states. <clears throat> okay, so this would be some L where air, L is states with limited powers. So some states with limited powers are not S, which would be slave states. So some states with limited powers are not slave states. So this is an O form statement. Um, <clears throat> therefore, some free states, so uh, um, a free state would be a non-slave state. Uh, another way to say that, because we need to keep the same classes. So therefore, some non-slave states are not states having unlimited powers. So if L is states having limited powers, then non-L would be states having unlimited powers. All right, let's go back. So, all right, so some L are not S, and then what we end up having is that some non-S are not non-L, where non-S means free states, and non-L means um, unlimited, <clears throat> or sorry, non-S means non-slave states, and non-L means uh, unlimited freedom. Is this an acceptable logical inference to make? <clears throat> Is it a valid inference? Um, okay, so first of all, we have to figure out what we've done here. Well, notice that we've flipped the subject and predicate classes, so L and S are now in different positions. So we know it's either conversion or contraposition. <clears throat> And what we've done here is um, we see that we have the class complements. So here in the original statement, we have S and here we have non-S. And then in the original statement here, we have L and here we have non-L. And notice that we keep the same form. Some S are not P, some S are not P. So we flipped it and changed to the class complements. That is contraposition. When is contraposition a contraposited state statement logically equivalent to uh, the original. That would be in all A form and O form statements. We know this is an O form statement, thus this is a logically valid inference to make because the contrapositive of an O form statement is logically equivalent to the original statement. Um, so as another reminder, when we convert things, it's E and I statements that are logically equivalent to their converted statements. And then A and O statements are logically equivalent when you're using contrapositive. And then aversion is always, they're always logically equivalent. Um, the way I remember it is cows eat insects, conversion, um, E and I statements, cows eat insects, and then um, contra, Contra O. So because it's contra positive, I say contra A form statements, O, contra O. So C E I, cows eat insects, conversion E I, contra O. You can use whatever mnemonic device you want. That might be really confusing to some. I like to use things that don't make sense, like cows eat insects, because it sticks in your head, right? You think of like a cow eating insects, and then you just you always know that converted in conversion E and I statements <clears throat> are logically equivalent. All right, let's continue. You can see I have these written out already. Do a couple more. Some insane people are illogical people. So some non-sane people are non-logical people. Let's see what I have. Yeah, so some non-sane people are non-logical people. Another way to say it. Therefore, some logical people are sane people. So therefore, some L R S. <clears throat> what did we do? Is this acceptable? Well, this is a sum S R P statement. So we know that this is an I form statement. And then we also know that this is an I form statement. <clears throat> so we've maintained the same form. Uh, we have flipped the subject and predicate classes. So we know that this is either conversion or contraposition. 
And we can see that we've also changed to class complements. So the class complement of non-S is S, and the class complement of non-L is L. So we know that when we flip it and change to class complement, we are using contra positive. We just talked about this. Contra O, contra O. A and O statements are logically equivalent when you do the contra positive. This is an I form statement. So this is uh, an invalid inference to make and it's uh, elicit contraposition or elicit contrapositive. Either way, I would accept it. Um, this is not allowable <clears throat> from a logical perspective if you want to um, create a valid argument. All right, let's do two more and then we'll stop the video. Some organ transplants are not sensible operations. Some organ transplants are not sensible operations. So some O are not S. So we know that that's an O form statement. The conclusion we're drawing is some organ transplants are senseless operations. So a senseless operation is a non-sensible operation. So some organ transplants are non-sensible operations. <clears throat> um, this is an I-form statement. So your brain should be saying to you obverse, obverse, obverse uh, when the forms change. Um, okay, so is this a version? Well, what we have here is we have a some S are not P, which changes to some SRP, so we've changed the quality from the negative O form to the affirmative I form. And then we've changed the um, predicate class to its class complement. We've gone from all S's, which are sensible operations, to non-S, which are, which are non-sensible operations. <clears throat> and we remember uh, that we know that obverses are always logically equivalent. So this is a valid uh, uh, argument, a valid form. All right, one more. And we'll stop. No individuals who laugh all the time are people with a true sense of humor. No individuals who laugh all the time are people with a sense of humor. <clears throat> Therefore, no people with a true sense of humor are individuals who laugh all the time. You can probably already see it. All we've done is flipped. We've converted. We've moved the predicate class to the subject and vice versa. So we know that this is conversion um, because when, whenever you just flip subject and predicate class, it's conversion. And we know that cows eat insta insects. So um, in conversion, E and I form statements are logically equivalent. This is an E form statement, no SRP. Thus, <clears throat> this is a, a valid argument or a valid immediate inference to make. Uh, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Um, uh, and I would just encourage you to continue to learn logic and do a great job in this class.